Hi, my name is Tallulah. Welcome to my channel if you're new here. Today, I just received this huge box of art supplies from Amazon. These are all supplies that I can't get locally in South Africa. And I waited until I had a huge wish list before ordering. So we're going to unbox and then I'm going to do some swatching. So first of all, these color raised pencils may not seem very exciting, but we don't get them in South Africa and I always see artists sketching with them. So I'm very excited to try that myself. Second, my first ever Daniel Smith extra fine watercolors. This is the secondary set. So it was on a good deal. Huge box of Turner acryl gouache. So acryl gouache is something that isn't in the country at all yet. It is a mix between gouache, which is my favorite, and acrylic, which used to be my favorite. So the key difference between gouache and acrylic is that gouache is like watercolor, but it can be reactivated. So if you paint one layer and then you want to layer another layer on top of it, you have the risk of all of your layers kind of blending together, which is useful and can be a nice effect but it's not always my favorite. Acrylic, on the other hand, goes on shiny. It looks a bit like painting with plastic, which can also be fun, and it doesn't reactivate. So you can do layer after layer after layer, as many times as you like, um, and it's not gonna go muddy. So acryl gouache is the best of both worlds. It's got the beautiful matte finish of gouache, but you can't reactivate it like acrylic. So I'm very keen to try these out. I'm going to start by swatching the acryl wash. It's a huge set, 36 colors. We have 10 single pigment paints and eight convenience colors. And the rest are all colors that you can't mix with what's provided. So let's go through them. First of all, we have permanent yellow, PY3, also known as aralide yellow or hunter yellow. Then permanent yellow, PY74, also known as Aralide Yellow, 5GX, or Cadmium Yellow Hue is the more common name. Then Deep Yellow, which is a combination of PY55 and PY170. PY55 is Diaralide Yellow. I hope I'm pronouncing these correctly. Also known as Benzidine, that is mixed with PY170, which is Pigment Yellow. Then we have Joan Brill, which is PY170, PO34, and PW6. Now PW6 will come to later, that's just white, titanium white to be precise. PY170, as mentioned before, is pigment yellow, and PO34, the O means orange, is pyrazolone, I have no idea how to say that, orange, also known as cadmium orange hue, quite a common orange. Then we get into the reds. They gave us an amazing selection of reds and pinks. So first we've got permanent red, which is PR170. That's one of the single pigment colors. Then we have carmine, PR238. Now you'll see I drew a little skull and crossbones next to PR38 because it is a fugitive color as discussed in my previous video. Then we have Crimson, which is also a single pigment color, PR14. PR14 is also known as Permanent Bordeaux. Then we have Permanent Scarlet, which is PR9, also single pigment, which is also known as Naphthol, I hope I'm saying that correctly, or Poppy, or Vermilion Hue. Then we have Coral Red and two more fugitive colors. You'll see Opera Red, our friend, coming up next. But what's interesting about these is that they are actually the same mix, but they have different amounts of white in them. So Coral Red is PR9, which is that permanent scarlet and permanent white, which means that we can mix them. And then Opera Red is PR9 and permanent white with fluorescent pink. And then we have fluorescent pink with a little bit of white, PW6. Then onto magenta, 
What I found interesting about the set is that both the magenta and the violet have fluorescence in them, which means they are both fugitive colors as well. The magenta is PR88. PR88 is otherwise known as, let me try this, Theo Indigoid Violet. Theo Indigoid? Anyway, it's written on screen. Um, I personally would have been happier if it had just been that pigment without the fluorescence as it would make it more light fast, but it's still a beautiful color. And then we have the violet itself, which is PV, pigment violet 23. PV 23 is otherwise known as dioxide violet or dioxidine purple or dioxidine violet. Again, I would be much happier if it didn't have the fluorescence in it, but it is a beautiful color. Next we have Ultramarine. I made a little typo there on the pigment. It's PB for blue, 29, which is the pigment Ultramarine, very common blue. Next we have Cobalt Blue, which is also a very common primary blue shade, but you'll see this one is just the Ultramarine mixed with a little bit of white, so it's a convenience color. Convenience colors, even though you can mix them yourself, the reason they're called convenience colors is because you don't have to every time. So if I want the same shade of blue every time, it's better to use it out of a tube than to try and mix it myself. Because you'll see with these blues, you can get a very large variety of blues by just simply altering the amount of ultramarine or another pigment a tiny bit. So the next blue, blue compost, PB15 and PW6. So PB15 is also known as thalocyanine also known as phthalo blue. So you'll see that phthalo blue isn't actually in the set, but it has been used to mix a number of the colors. So this blue compost uses phthalo blue and a bit of white. And then the Prussian blue also uses phthalo blue and the ultramarine, the PB29, and a little bit of the lamp black, which we'll get to later, PBK7. Okay, I made a little bit of a mistake and started the um, aqua blue in the wrong place. <laughs> so let's just stick a piece of paper over that and continue. So we've got aqua blue, which is the PB15, phthalo blue, and PW6 white. So it's actually the same color as the blue compose with a little bit more white. Again, a convenience color. Then sky blue, PB15, the phthalo blue. PY3, which is the yellow, and PW6, which is the white. Again, a convenience color, but a beautiful convenience color. Then turquoise blue, PB15, you guessed phthalo blue, PY3, the yellow, and PW6, the white. Again, the same colors mixed together in different quantity, creating a completely different blue. So. Another example of why convenience colors are so useful, because you don't have to worry about trying to get turquoise blue versus sky blue versus aqua blue. It's all mixed already. And then this is one of my favorites, the barrel green, PW6, PB15, and PG7. So the difference with this one is that it has PG7 in it, which is a green pigment. And this is, let me try and say this, phallocyanine green also known as phthalo green. And then the permanent green mid is PB15 with PY3. So it's using that phthalo blue and it's mixing it with the permanent yellow. But since we don't have the phthalo blue, it's still useful to have. Then viridian hue, PB15 and PY3. So it's you can see the difference between the colors using the same base pigments. So again, convenience, not having to mix the same two eyes. Then we have emerald green, another beautiful color, which is PG7, which we mentioned earlier. PG7, that's the phthalo green that we don't have with PY3, the permanent yellow and PW6. And then the permanent green light is PG7 and PY3. So it's that green uh, mixed with the permanent yellow. And then the last of the greens is the deep green, which is using a pigment called PY55. PY55 is otherwise known as benzidine, or let me try and say this, diarylide yellow. 
So that's a new one and it's mixed with the Thaler PV15. Then we have Olive Green PV15 with PO13, which is an orange, which we don't have. PO13 is otherwise known as Benzidine Orange. And PY74, which is that permanent yellow. Then we have Yellow Ochre, which is another single pigment color. PY42. When I was looking up ochre, there are so many different names for it that went on about half a page for all of the different names of this pigment. It's one of the oldest pigments and it's used historically around the world. Um, another common name is yellow iron oxide. But yeah, yellow ochre is yellow ochre. And same with burnt sienna, an ancient color that has been known by many names around the world. What's interesting about this one is that it's actually mixed with a little bit of brown. So the actual pigment for burnt sienna is PR101, but you'll see that it's mixed with a bit of PBR11, which is the brown pigment that they've used for all three of the browns. That brown pigment is known as magnesium ferrite, very common brown. So the sepia is a mix of the burnt sienna pigment, PR101, the brown, PR11, and PBK7, which is lamp black. And then again, burnt umber is the exact same mix of pigments, but with different quantities. So you can see there's more of the sienna in the burnt umber, and very convenient to have these three different varieties, even though you could technically mix them yourself from the set. Then what was really nice about the set was it gave me two blacks and two whites. So the two blacks, the one that we've been seeing a lot of already is lamp black, which is otherwise known as carbon black because it is actually made from carbon or charcoal historically. And you'll see it has a bit of a brownish tint, which is why it mixes so well with the browns. And that's PBK7. And then we have jet black. Jet black is to me a much blacker black you can see though it granulates a little bit more, PBK1. And what was interesting was that this black, jet black, or also known as aniline black, had a little bit of a warning label on the tube telling you not to consume it. It's poisonous because it's made from copper. So that was interesting because none of the other colors had that warning. Then onto the whites, we have uh, the one we're, we're familiar with already. Can't really see it, but PW6, which is a nice, white for layering on top of other colors for highlights and then what was really awesome was they gave us a separate tube of mixing white which is a much thinner white a thin down i'm guessing with more gum arabic to make it easier to mix with other colors without necessarily altering the opacity i mean that will need to be tested but that's my theory about why it's different and it's definitely a, a lot thinner and easier to spread and mix. So there we have it. Those are the Turner Acryl Wash colors. A beautiful array of colors. As you can see, if you put them down straight out of the tube, they are incredibly opaque, and then you can wash them out with more water to make them more like watercolors. I am very satisfied with the variety of colors here. I think they're all very clear and bright, and I can't wait to make something with them. And then quickly, since um, they aren't the only paints I got, I thought I'd do a quick swatch of the Daniel Smith Extra Fine Watercolors, the secondary set. So first of all, we have this quinacridone burnt orange. You'll remember quinacridone mentioned as a pigment in um, the last video that I did. And it has information on the, about the pigment um, on the tube, quinacridone gold. I'm painting it wet on wet and then um, wet on dry so you can see the difference and see how it travels. Then the main highlight for me was this undersea green. So this undersea green is made of ultramarine and quinacridone gold and as you paint with it the colors separate a little bit so you can see the beautiful spread of the different colors. It's almost like a special effect and it does look like you're under the sea. It's very aptly named maybe under a pond. And then finally, this there's this Cobzol Violet, which is dioxazine purple or violet dioxazine, PV23, which we encountered already earlier. And you'll see it's, um, it's just a beautiful, beautiful single pigment color. And there you go. That's what it looks like dry after it's had a little bit of time to spread. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. I hope you found it useful. 
Um, I will be posting something soon where I actually paint something with the cruel gouache. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.